We heard you. You told us what you were going through, and you told us it was no longer acceptable for you, or for your children, or for your grandchildren. We are going to move you to a new home. Some cautious optimism today for a First Nation in Northern Ontario. The Kashechwan community received and reached, I'm sorry, an agreement with the provincial and federal governments that lays out a plan to move the First Nation. Kashechwan sits on the western shores of James Bay on a floodplain right beside the Albany River. Every year for the past 17 years, floodwaters have forced the community of 2,500 to evacuate. Back in 2005, Paul Martin's Liberal government committed to relocating the First Nation, but that was scrapped by the Harper government. And then the Trudeau government signed a commitment back in 2017, but nothing ever happened. So, can Kashechwan trust today's announcement, and what is Ontario's role in carrying out the plan? Greg Rickford is the Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines, and Minister of Indigenous Affairs as well. He joins us now from Toronto. Hi, Minister. Pleasure to see you again. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, Vashi. Thank you for having me. It's been a great day here in Toronto. Can you clarify the timeline on this agreement, Minister? The federal government appears to be cautious because they don't. They say they don't understand the full scope of the move yet. They've estimated it'll take between 8 and 10 years, yeah. and that's even outlined in the framework agreement that your government signed. You told reporters today, though, that you think it can be done in five. Why is well, that? Well, I didn't tell the reporters that it could be done in five. I'd said that there were some estimations. There's nothing controversial about this, Vashi. With the greatest of respect over my entire career. I've never seen a community that I've visited uh, and, and visited in locations when they've been dislocated as a result of flooding almost annually. Uh, so enthusiastic about a master framework agreement that has a workplace uh, summary attached to it. That's probably the seminal document. It charts a path forward for this community uh, to move once and for all. The timelines that you're asking about are obviously uh, there are steps that will be immediate. There will be uh, some steps over the intermediate time. I've heard Chief Al uh, Grand Chief Alvin Fiddler, who played a pivotal role uh, in this process over the past 10, uh, 10 days, talk about six years. So there is a bit of an unknown factor to us, but I, uh, to this, but I don't see that as being controversial at all. The yeah, chief, with the respect, chief of, Minister, I'm not asking because it's controversial. Yeah, I'm asking it because it's been well. I've been asking because it's been 17 years yeah, uh, of them moving in and out, and a timeline is crucially important to enough. the people of of that community. Yeah, I'm just asking. Right. What, asking you to clarify what is a reasonable timeline that people can expect there. Yeah, so as I said before, uh, Grand Chief Alvin Fiddler had estimated in our discussions that we would be looking uh, at around six years. I think that's probably uh, fairly uh, reasonable. Um, may, perhaps the finishing touches when we're talking about moving an entire community in a very, very remote part of northern Ontario. Um, it could possibly take uh, uh, a little bit longer. Uh, obviously, the federal government uh, can, can have their estimations on these. I, I concur with the general consensus uh, that somewhere between six and seven years we should be able to completely and thoroughly move uh, the community and its infrastructure, housing, uh, and all of those uh, important pieces uh, to uh, Site 5. I take your point as well on the enthusiasm yeah. of the community today. I, I agree. There fabulous. certainly is. And, and even Response. from various parties, including, you know, Charlie Angus, who has advocated yeah. for that community for a long time, there is a there is a lot of optimism. I do want to ask, though, specifically, given the amount of sort of uh, time that has, and, and this is, of course, a question for the federal government as well, but the amount of, uh, the number of years that they have been hopeful for an agreement and not seen it come to fruition. There is a line in this agreement there that says, while the revised 2019 framework agreement is entered into in good faith, it does not create legally binding obligations for the parties. So, so what what ensures that this time will be different? Well, that's what's difference be the difference between the framework agreement that we established today and the work uh, plan summary and an agreement that was signed in 2017, which I had absolutely nothing to do, but nothing substantial was done for that agreement. So the most important part of the work that we did today and what we signed on to was an actual work plan, uh, Vashi. It details costs on certain known things. It commits and obligates and sets out responsibilities for Kasechuan First Nation, for the province of Ontario and the federal government of Canada to live up to certain activities at certain times. So we're very pleased that this was a living, working document, as Minister uh, O'Regan, a wonderful uh, fellow, by the way, and, and, and worked with us lock, 
step uh, for the past 10 days, often phone calls well into the night to make sure that this framework agreement was, was different from anything else that uh, had been done in the past. There are other champions out there besides Charlie Angus, uh, uh, I might add, and put a work plan in place that commits all three levels of government, creates responsibilities, commitments and obligations uh, as we uh, chart a path forward for this community to move to a new permanent site that they can call home. But it's still not legally binding, is that correct? The work plan summary creates obligations and commitments, Vashi, without question. The, uh, the document was written in good faith. We set out terms in the work plan summary. I'm not sure if you've had a chance uh, to review it with pertinent details about who will do what, when, uh, in some instances how much uh, uh, that will cost, but we're looking very forward to uh, honoring that, uh, that, that document. And as I said before, these agreements, the only reason um, that they would not be binding is, is because the work plan uh, summary spells out certain steps that will cost uh, obviously the treasuries and ca seek cabinet approval on various items that are detailed in the work plan summary. Uh, so accomplishing those tasks, going to Treasury Board and Cabinet as they occur and as they arise are, uh, are steps that that, ag that agreement uh, couldn't contemplate. But we discussed right. that before uh, hand with the Chief, with the uh, Grand Chief of the Meshkigiwak Council, uh, Grand Chief uh, Alvin Fiddler and uh, Grand Chief uh, Roseanne Archibald, who I might add also played a very important role in this. And with all the candor um, and advice, advice she provided, uh, we got to an important place today that we've never been before. Yeah, fortunately, I did have a chance to read through it, and I know, uh, picking up on, on the point you made about how some costs are outlined and some are not, That's uh, there will be money, sort of, that, that will be determined after things like housing inventory relocation census is done. Uh, that, that's what I understand. Is there going to be an amount of money set aside by the province for this, uh, an estimation even provided by the province, and over how many years, if so? Well, if you look at the the uh, work plan, you'll see that the the initial work that the province of Ontario has to do, and it's it's very very important work, is to focus on the transfer of crown lands, obviously to identify, negotiate, and finalize uh, any uh, lands use acts that that we have. Um, that uh, deal with Site 5, which is the proposed location for, for the community uh, to move to, um, and that in the absence of it being an Indian reservation for the purposes of the Indian Act, and that's the only reason that I use that word, it's in the context of the, ta uh, of the law. So those obviously are, are non-monetary things that can be done within our department. Moving forward, uh, Vashi, we have every intention of honoring, honoring where Ontario shows up uh, in various line items, whether there's a cost accounting for it or, or not, and in future uh, budgetary exercises, we'll be certain that we accommodate for any of those costs uh, uh, as they arise. I We're just, in full support of this. After 17 years, it's high time that it I, was done. I just want to be clear, because you know that there are a lot of questions around budget, the budget, the provincial government's budget, their line item spending. We know that there was a $6 million cut in the baseline for Indigenous funding year over year. I just want to make sure that I'm clear, our viewers are clear, people in the community are clear. If the money is required, it will be there. It, the, the money will be there, and I might add with respect to that we've made strategic investments in indeed Indigenous affairs and not compro compromised our important program and service delivery from that ministry. Uh, so we're looking very forward to, 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 to uh, supporting uh, this day for Kasechuan uh, and, and for the Albany Band, the, uh, the larger community uh, along the coastline there, and ensuring that the, the people of Kasechuan, importantly, those children who I've had a chance to interact with over the years in various capacities I've served in, um, have a place that they can call home permanently. All right, thank you so much, Minister Rickford. Really appreciate your time today. That's Greg Rickford, Ontario's Minister of Indigenous Affairs. Vashi, I appreciate you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.